Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Wednesday, October the 27th, and we're going to pick up here, you guessed it, in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God. And as we do, he reminded us yesterday that, listen, the Lord is coming. And you say, well, how long is it going to be for us to wait for his coming? And so I'm glad you asked, because he's going to give you an answer today. Notice what he says in verse 8 of 2 Peter chapter 3. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And so he says, what seems like an awful long time to you is a very short time in the retrospect of eternity and how God sees history unfolding. So while it may be 6,000 years since Adam and Eve in the garden and creation and all that happened, all that's happened within inside of those 6,000 years, it's really been like six days in the time spectrum of the Lord and how he sees history. And so while our suffering may seem long, it really is not long at all compared to how long all of eternity is going to be. But why does God tarry? Why couldn't he come back the first day then? Why not within the first thousand years? Well, if he had, then you and I wouldn't be sitting here today uh, looking into God's word, understanding what it means to be loved by God when we were sinners separated from him, rebellious, stiff-necked, hard-hearted, uh, not caring about the things of God. And yet God was patient and long-suffering. And I know that in in my early life, when I was in opposition to God, I had people I know that were praying for God to come back in their day. In their, in, in, in the, when I was separated from God, they were saying, Lord Jesus, just come back today. And I'm glad that Jesus didn't come back on that day, that he saw through the lens of history, through all the 6,000 years, and he had he had individuals that he knew that would respond to his love, his grace, and his mercy, and he's waiting it out so that every one of those will experience eternity in heaven. And you say, well, how do you know that, Brother Toby? Well, he simply says it here. He says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. The Lord is not slack. He's coming. He is coming. But there are some people out there who are not ready, and he wants them to be ready. And he knows they're going to respond to his love and his grace, his mercy. They're, he knows they're, they're, at some point they're, they're going to stop rebelling against him and come to him and realize how much he loved them and what he's done to, that they may be able to have forgiveness of sin and eternal life and, and the fellowship and the joy of the Lord and that peace that surpasses all understanding and the comfort with uh, you can comfort others with. I mean, the Lord God above is good today. And he's only waiting because he has souls that he's concerned with those who will come and and bask in his presence for all of eternity. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so the reason he's tearing is because he cares for you and for me. If you're listening to this video this morning, the reason he hasn't come by the prayers and the impatience of man in the years before is because he cares about you, because he cares about me. And he can see through the lens of history, and he sees every soul that will respond to his love, grace, and mercy. And he says, and I will wait. I will wait, and I will hold out, because I'm not slack concerning my promise, but there are those in whom I know that are going to respond and come and be with me for all of eternity. And so he says, he's long suffering toward us now notice what that says long suffering <laughs> breaks the heart of god to see the tragedy of man here upon the earth and you don't believe that you can just go back to genesis chapter 6 where god says it repenteth me that i have made man it broke his heart that it had come to that place that man had become so rebellious that the only way to to um to restore any hope in humanity was to wipe everybody off the face of the earth and, and thank God he doesn't do that today because he could and he, he's going to though soon because notice what he says here. He's coming and he is going to restore and he is going to wipe away once again, but then it will be forever and ever and ever and ever. But notice what he says, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night 
in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The work, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And so he says, trust me, it is coming to an end. But there are others in whom I am going to bring with me into eternity, and I will long suffer and wait with you until they come. And I love that. And he says, I will not lose one of them in whom you have given to me. Jesus said, I will not lose one of them. No one can pluck them out of my hand. I will save them because they will come. They will respond to the mercy and the grace that God has given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And so, oh, I pray today that as you go forward and as you see all of those troubles and trials and difficulties in this world, as he told us, in this world, you shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. I'm thankful that I belong to the Savior who was long-suffering and patient and willing that Toby Stone wouldn't perish. And he saw through the lens of, it, of history a heart that would turn to him and be saved for all of eternity. And I pray that you can rejoice in that truth today as well. If you cannot, you can reach out to us uh, by via message or phone call. We have a website, rawsobaptist.org. We have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram. Uh, we got a YouTube channel. I mean, you can reach out to us in any way you uh, feel is necessary for you to make sure that you know that God doesn't want you to perish, but have everlasting life. And so oh, I do pray that you go forth today mightily in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I pray that you are encouraged to find it.